Thank you for joining us on another episode of Decoding Couples. My name's Rachel. We've got Stacy here. And our guest today is Andy. And Andy is going to help us talk about what's difficult to talk about behind closed doors, but especially when you've got some distance between you and your partner, whether it's due to COVID, um, business, life stuff. We know that distance physically can absolutely put a wedge in your relationship. So Andy, can you kind of tell everybody um, who you are and uh, yeah, where you're at? Yeah, absolutely. So um, Andy Lash, like you said, I'm uh, currently a general manager of logistics for Gemini Motor Transport. Uh, it's a company out here based out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I've been with the company 10 years and the vast majority of that time was spent living over the road. Uh, we manage oh truck gosh. drivers, we manage uh, transportation services. So I was for the most part gone Monday through Thursday, Monday through Friday uh, for a good portion of the last six years. Wow. So I learned a little bit about how to keep a marriage going. I've been married <laughs> for 10 years. Uh, we have two kids and uh, I've got a little bit of practice in that world. So I'm trying nice. to share a little bit of that uh, experience with everybody here. Yeah. So I think it's interesting right now with, you know, kind of COVID hitting if people have distance um, because they can't travel to see each other as much or as yeah. work is picking back up um, yeah. concerns with safety and how that integrates back into the house. Your input is really helpful to us because you have navigated it. So give us your best pointers. What are some things that <laughs> worked for you guys? What are the things that would not work and you do not want people to replicate? Uh, <laughs> let's just, let's just get after it. Well, there's a lot. And, and when my wife watches this, I'm sure she'll be like, you should have been taking some more of that advice a long time ago. <laughs> um, I am off the road now, which is nice. So, so it's been good. It's been about a year. Uh, but really in my eyes, it comes down to the core things, which I think listening to the show and seeing some of your videos before, I mean, um, trust and the trust yeah. issues are yeah. just ever more, you know, magnified. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it could be, you know, like I'm out at a dinner for, for business and I'm actually meeting customers and it becomes, are they really customers? Are you seeing somebody else? Mm. Are you, you know, like yeah. all the different, like, places your mind can go uh, if you let them go there. So mm -hmm. trust gets magnified. And then for us, I know that jealousy was always a big thing too. It's that same scenario where if my wife was stuck here at home and she's got the kids and they're losing their mind and it's just been like a hell of a day. And she's like, calls me up. Hey, it's been a horrible day. What are you doing? Uh, I got box seats for the Thunder game and I just ate it, you know, this uh, steakhouse. And, uh, I would not want to hear no. that. Not yeah. fun, honey. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then it's like, oh, the customers, I got to go. I'm at, a, I'm at work right now, you know? And so, so that just really amplifies those kind of yeah. things too. So to deal with that, um, really trying to, when you are together to focus, uh, that was hard for me and a lesson that took a long time to learn because I'm a workaholic. I, work doesn't stop. Um, on Fridays. Uh, so I had to put the phone down. I have to focus mm -hmm. on and give my attention to um, my, you know, my partner and then tell her, you know, I appreciate the time and, and, and make as much of the, you know, value out of that time as we can since it's limited. So I, I'm curious, like, cause I'm the kind of person, um, and we were just talking about this, like when someone goes silent on the other line, right? Like if my partner, we're like maybe texting back and forth, we're not together. Um, there's a couple days, so I'm going to see them again. And you go silent. I think like my, my stuff starts to spin. Um, I'll just like lovingly call it that. And, you know, I struggle with like, do I then pick up the phone and call and say like, Hey, like this is really bothering me or this is coming up for me knowing that they are somewhere that's like, you know, for work or their mind needs to be focused. And I don't often think about what it is like for him on the other end. So I guess like my question is, if I'm spinning out on this end, like, what do you recommend for the partner that is, you know, stuck at home or is maybe having anxiety around the silence, maybe having FOMO? Um, is it disruptive to have like your partner call and be like, hey, I really need to talk? Like, how do you navigate that part? Because I think 
um, that, that would be really hard for me to know like where I fit in and like when you are able to focus. Absolutely. We, uh, we spent quite a bit of time trying to navigate that situation (laughs) right there. And I think every part, every relationship is going to come to their own routine eventually. Uh, I did it for five, six years. So by the end, she just kind of knew, right? She's like, oh, mm. by, by like, I'll get a text or something in the morning. And then unfortunately for the work I do, I was not in the nicest of places. I mean, like Timbuktu, North Dakota, West Texas, cell service alone is not always something yeah. you have. So we had to just learn that, okay, I might not be available until yeah. the end of the day or something. So but there was a lot of tension t- before we finally got to that routine. For your question specifically, though, I think, I think it, you, it's always welcome to reach out. I, I think you have to have that open channel either way. Yeah. And, but, but try not to spin out when you don't get a response right away. You might get that quick response when they're you know, in the office or they're on the weekends. But you know, for me, we're traveling, I'm flying, I'm driving, I'm, I'm doing all these kind of things. It's going to delay those responses and just kind of learn what that is. But I know that on that same topic for, for my wife and probably similar to many couples, there's a little bit of a resentment that grows if she's always reaching out to me and I'm not reaching out to her. So trying to find that balance, both sides have to think about it. It was yeah. not uncommon for me to wake up at 6 a.m. And by 7 o'clock at night, I just, the day's gone. And I'm like, I don't even realize that, crap, I didn't, I didn't say good morning. I didn't say anything. So uh, you have to make a conscious effort to really keep that in your routine for sure. So is it fair to say that having assertive communication, like when you need something, ask for it, right? right. Until you learn you know, when, you know, when your partner is like, Hey, I really can't talk to you when I'm in this meeting. Right. Okay. Then you probably shouldn't be blowing up their phone, but assertive communication when there's appropriate times. And then it sounds like for the person that's gone, having really strong boundaries around how to prioritize their partner. Like, is that fair to be able to say, okay, I am going to take this half hour, not work, talk to my person and then like really focus on them and then go back at it. So assertive communication, one side boundaries on the other side, is that yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would also try to really make a proactive approach to, to kind of call out those times when I'm going to be totally MIA. So yeah. I would send that text like, hey, I got this three hour training that I'm doing. I'm going to be gone or I'm going into the no cell service area for yeah. the next six hours or flying or, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then always making an effort, which I was best at, like when I landed, Hey, I landed. I made it. Hey, I'm back in cell service. I made it, you know, and, and trying to really kind of put a bookend to either side of those, those, um, unavailable times. If you know, if you want to call it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what do you think is something, um, that would help you guys maybe get out of a funk after like a text fight or a, t- a hard conversation. Cause it's like, you're separated. Co- COVID's not going anywhere anytime soon. Um, if you're separated because of that reason, but jobs are starting to really like open back up. People are starting to travel. So like what kind of gets you off out of like, you know, when you have the argument and then it's like in the air, like you can just feel it and you're like, so how are the kids? Or like, How's the dog? Like, it's just so awkward. Like, are there anything that you found that was either helpful for you to kind of get you guys like moving again or things that you focused on that just change it? Cause I feel like sometimes, okay, you get out of the fight, but then you're in like the rut from the fight and distance just yeah. makes it worse. No, it, that's a tough one. I don't, I don't know. If we, <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I don't know if we ever really like locked that one down I think we were finally like after five years of living that life we were probably getting it towards the end and I probably say that because the fights that we do have which luckily we we don't have that many fights um but uh by the end there we kind of like okay I could tell like I could read that text and be like (laughs) you know like oh that's not good and then (laughs) Just work it out at the end of the day when things have calmed down, when I know the kids are asleep, like just call it out, put a name like, Hey, yeah, 
okay, what, what happened? What did I, you know, sometimes it's like, I don't know what I did, but what, you know, and just try to talk through it the best I can. No, no secret sauce on that one. Uh, Of course it does easier, get easier when you do finally, you know, come back to back in person. Yeah. Work it out then. So that's my other question. When you, so for your situation, if you were only home for the weekend, um, or three days, whatever it was, how do you recommend kind of maximizing your time when you only do have a couple days to reconnect mm. before getting that around the road? Like what are, yeah, what are the things that worked for you of maximizing your time? I, th- I think tr- trying to have those, those kind of hard boundaries around like, what are the distractions? So for me, it was work. Mm-hmm. So try to set boundaries on, okay, I'm off. I'm, I'm going to, instead of doing it, I'm going to delegate it or I'm going to push it off or I'm going to find something else. I would also intentionally work far more hours during the week to like get ahead going into a Friday, Mm. knowing that I didn't like, so that's really prioritization of, I have to make the weekend time. So I'm going to stack the week up, get it out of the way and get it done. And, and I think for many couples, it could be lots of things for me. Uh, I would prioritize work out of the way, but that also turned into like, I didn't have a great friend relate. Like I didn't have a lot of friends yeah, yeah. that when that time is limited, you, you end up just prioritizing that time and like relationships outside of your marriage yeah. or your relationships start to suffer real fast. And yeah. that, that's a hard, hard balance too. Cause then I would feel guilty trying to go do something with a friend because I'm like I've been gone all week and you know all this yeah. kind of stuff. So that that's a whole other balancing act to, to live. Yeah, no, but I think we appreciate that honesty. And I think that's what a lot of people resonate with. It's just like, you know, we there are things we can do, like Stacy had pointed out, like the assertive communication. You had mentioned Andy like calling it out, but like at the end of the day, what I appreciate, what I think I'm hearing you say is like it isn't perfect. Like you can prioritize um, you can try and kind of reframe and regroup, but at the end of the day, like there's just, it is a struggle. You don't have it all figured out. Um, and it's even just individually hard for you to kind of fill all those buckets, like not just with you and your wife, but then like who you are as an individual, your friendships. And like, it's not all going to be clean and worked out. So um, I really appreciate you kind of letting us in on that side of it. Cause I think, you know, Instagram, Facebook life makes it all look so dramatic on the homecoming, but a lot of people aren't really willing to like share like the struggle part. So we really appreciate that. Um, but thank you so much for coming on here and giving us this fresh perspective. Hopefully you do it again soon. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Bye.